covering, uh, showing you only two projects, but I am going to be covering a lot of techniques. So there's a lot to learn. Stay tuned. It's going to be super fun. Should that be good? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. So actually today, um, here, at, here at DECO, our, we're in Lexington, Kentucky. Today is a gorgeous day, don't you think? Last time I remember <laughs> when, when we started filming, it was super dark and rainy and stormy, but today it's gorgeous. So for those of you who are here already, um, we're going to be doing two projects. Well, one of them I'll be doing, you know, demoing um, live how to do it. And the other one, I'm just going to sort of go through the motions. So we're going to start with this one here. Um, it's just a cute little wood birdhouse. The bottom is painted with our Americana acrylics, which is, you know, our staple, our awesome craft paint. And then the top, I'm gonna get um, to that next, but as you could see, it's a really pretty, I like to call it a simple mosaic. Because as you know, with traditional mosaic, you're gonna take your mosaic pieces, you're going to set them into your grout and then you're going to take a, a rag or something and take all of the grout off right so your your mosaics are nice and clean this is only two steps so it's a lot easier than uh, actual mosaic a lot simpler and a lot funner because you can get really creative with the colors that you use the texture so we're going to start with creating the actual uh we're going to call them tiles just for the purposes of uh getting that across. And we're using cardstock. Everybody has some cardstock at home, right? So that's really easy. And we're gonna start with this mosaic here. And if you can get to the closer camera, that would be super cool. So what that is, it might be hard to tell, but it's actually a paint pour that's cut into little triangles. All right, so if we can zoom back out. I'm gonna do a simple pour with just three different colors. I know most of you already know how to pour, but here we go. Oh, I guess we, we still have the close up. Here we go, I'm gonna move it right there. All right, so I have a fuchsia, and I'm doing just an itty bitty bit because the paper is so small, obviously. We're doing a blue, and we're gonna do a yellow. So variations of your uh, primary colors, right? Then we're gonna take a little bit of our pouring medium. And if you guys haven't used this, it's amazing. It actually creates cells all on its own without having to need any other additives or anything like that. And with Americana acrylics, you know, just a, with a basic craft paint, you're gonna go about one to one. Your ratio is one part paint, to one part pouring medium. And it does not have to be precise. As you can see, I totally just eyeballed it. Then you're gonna take your stir stick. And I'm not sharing the stir sticks, right? Cause I wanna keep the colors nice and vibrant. And we're just gonna give it a little stir. And I get this question quite often, how well do you have to stir it? Um, I would say well enough to where you don't see the <clears throat> pouring medium sort of marbling throughout. See, that looks like a pretty solid pink there, so we're good to go there. Then the yellow, give it a stir. And then the blue. And there's a bunch of different ways to pour. We're going to do what's called a dirty cup pour. So all three colors are going into one cup. And I like to use this rule slow and low because if you start up too high, you can muddy up your colors. So slow and low. And I'm just going to start to layer. All right, guys, now we're ready to pour, and I'm just gonna pour on this cardstock right here, which is exactly how I made these.
and I'm just going to move it around a little bit to cover the entire paper. And that's that. I'm going to set it aside, but this will be your end result. This one's already dry. Of course, I use different colors, but you get the point. Okay, so that's one. And the reason we're doing a variety is because it just looks so much more interesting when you have different textures. You know, we have the glitter, we have the pour, as opposed to just cutting out solid, um, you know, solid papers that are just one single color. So the next one we're going to do is a dry brush. And dry brushing is super easy. And you can use, you know, various different types of paintbrushes, but I like to use a chip brush. And this is the kind that <clears throat> the bristles are pretty stiff and they're pretty sparse and that's perfect for dry brushing. So we're just going to get a little bit of yellow. And this is um, Americana acrylics, one coat and it's, it's already dry. And I'm going to dip into the paint, but then I'm going to pounce most of it off. And I'm just going to go sort of in a crosshatch motion. So is that what dry brushing is? Just yeah. pouncing it, some of it off like that? Yes. You want to make sure that the brush is not saturated with water, mm -hmm. that it's nice and dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that you don't have too much paint, because you definitely want the color underneath to show through. Mm -hmm. OK, guys. So and there's many variations. This, this is, I would call, a medium contrast dry brush. You can go high contrast, low, subtle. OK, so that's. We have one here, your pour, two here, which is a dry brush. Let's move on to this one, which is really fun. Um, I don't have this technique on the house, but I do have it on this B platter. So if you can see the black there, that is a very special black that's an ultra black. So it's gonna be even blacker than our Americana lamp black, which is <clears throat> pretty black as well, but this one is even darker. This is called the Deco Art Americana Enchanted Ultra Black Base Coat. Okay, guys, so for that one, you're going to get your cardstock and you're just going to paint it with your ultra black base coat and you're going to let it dry. Then you're going to come in, and I'm going to demo two of our Enchanteds. So we have here Enchanted and Enchanted Shimmer. This is Enchanted only, but I'm going to do both so you can see the difference. Okay, so give it a little shake. And a little tiny paintbrush. Now, when I first brush it out, you're going to notice that it's going to look a little bit milky. That will, once it dries, anything that you see that's white or milky will completely di dissipate. You won't see that at all. And hopefully you can see that, but the shimmer has like a glitter dust, the tiniest glitter that is so pretty and shimmery. And you know what, you guys, at the end of this video, I'm going to show this to you again so you can see what it looks like after the white has completely dried. So next we're getting into the Enchanted without the shimmer. And everyone out there has their favorite. This is one of those that I have a really hard time deciding. Um, I, I really like both. Okay, and quickly, another thing you can do is see the little dots there. Just take the back of your paintbrush, dip it right in the Enchanted, and you can make your dots. And again, we'll, we'll come back to this one so you can see how it looks once it's all dry. Okay, so, so far we have, again, the pouring, the dry brushing, and now we have the Enchanted and Enchanted Shimmer. The next one we're going to do is our glitter. Now we make several glitters. Uh, 
the galaxy glitter is one of my favorites it has the various size glitter flakes in there uh, there's also different colors now if, if you're gonna <clears throat> try out a galaxy glitter of course try out your favorite colors but i always recommend when when you pick it up get the galaxy glitter and the clear ice comet because you can basically put it over any color this one is actually the clear ice comet over the turquoise colored paint but for the sake of the demo i'm gonna do this blue over blue paper and you always want to base coat your paper or surface first in a color that's very similar to your glitter. It will give you an overall better effect. It will look more solid and you will need less coats of the glitter. But look at, I mean, for, for a paint on glitter, look how nice that coverage is. I'll just do a little bit more because we have a lot to cover. It's super dark right over your hand. I don't know why. Oh. It, it, should I go up a little bit? Or? Yeah. All right. So that one's done. Oh, this is another one of my favorites, the gold. Okay. So I'm going to set these over here. We now have the pour, the dry brush the Enchanted, the Enchanted Shimmer, and the Galaxy Glitter. So the next one is, and this is not really a technique, it's just another one of my paints that's one of my favorites. Um, it's the Extreme Sheen. So that there's the Aquamarine. And just so you could see, this is two coats of the Aquamarine on, on this paper, how totally metallic and how beautiful that sheen is. And I'll just brush that out just just so you could see how nicely it covers. Okay, here we go. And for this I would recommend a soft flat brush. All right, guys, so you could see how nice that covers. That's one single coat. Okay, so now we're going to move on to, you know, creating your mosaic. So now you saw the process on your cardstock. The next thing you're going to do is cut out um, shapes. I kept it simple for the house. These are all just triangles, but you can do triangles, you could do circles, you can do squares. For the sake of this demo, I just did some squares and some triangles. Thank you. Okay, so I already prepped this house, I already painted the bottom in this beautiful turquoise in Americana acrylics. So now we're going to start on the top with Americana decor texture. Now, if you can go over to the close-up camera for just a second, I want to show you guys how thick and rich this is. And um, there's so much you can do with it, you guys. We're just scratching the surface today. But look, if I take it upside down, <laughs> That's how thick it is. Yeah. All right. So really simple. We have a palette knife. We have our little house here. And we're just going to start swiping it on. Okay, I guess I will go like that. Okay. Hopefully everyone has a good view. Yeah. And as far as the thickness um, for this technique, I would say about a medium thickness works best. For certain projects, a lot thicker works better. And for certain projects, you know, even thinner. But. Hmm. 
Now, if I show you the side here, maybe you could see how thick I have that on there. Is that's hard to see. Okay. Uh, I think so. I think so. All right, guys. So the next step is simply. Can you just wipe that off for me? Because I'm gonna use it for pressing these down. So we have all of our little pieces here. And here's a little trick. As you can see, this is completely flat. And I'm just going to bend the corners in a tiny bit. And you're just going to press it down. And a palette knife is really helpful, helpful for this part. So I have it down, and I'm just going to press it the palette knife. So it's working as a glue. It's working um, sort of as a grout, but it's not going to be a two-part process where you have to wipe anything back. You're simply laying the pieces in. So we're just going to keep going. Let's get some glitter in there and again just bend the corners in a little bit. Press it down and then use your palette knife to make sure it's Nice and flush. And what are you using again? Some people are asking. It's in the gold jar. Oh, I will show it again. Okay, guys, it is Deco Art Americana Decor Texture. I know that's a mouthful. So if you can just remember texture, um, and Michaels carries quite a few of the beautiful metallic colors. This is the gold. And again, I'll show you the inside. Super thick, super thick, super thick and rich. All right, so we're just gonna keep going with our pieces here. Now, if you don't have a lot of patience, <laughs> what you could do is simply make your pieces of um, your mosaic pieces a lot larger than this. These are on the smaller side, but I really like the dainty look. As a matter of fact, I could have even gone a little bit smaller, but I think it's really cute. Now, even though it takes a little bit of extra time, don't forget to actually you know, just bend the corners in a tiny bit. It really does make a big difference. Another thing I wanted to mention, as you could see, I went approximately two thirds of the way across the roof here. Um, depending on how fast you work, you can certainly cover a larger area than what I'm doing here. But if you're just starting out and it's your first time, you know, doing this process, this technique, I would definitely do it in sections. Oh, that has paint on. <laughs> so once you get going, um, it goes pretty fast. I also found, um, you know, I'm just demoing here today, but after I apply the texture, if I wait five minutes and it, you know, <clears throat> I allow it to thicken up a little bit, I think that it's much easier to have the little pieces just sort of stick down. How much open time do you have before that dries? Oh, that's a good question. And I kind of just touched on that a little bit. Um, I mentioned that <clears throat> if you apply the texture, and you wait about five minutes, it will be a lot tackier um, for the purposes of me doing this demo. I'm, I just, you know, want for it. As far as how much your, your open window of time, for example, <clears throat> once you apply the texture and you're starting with your design, I'm going to say 25 minutes. Because when you start getting into 30 minutes or past 30, it is going to start to dry which is nice. I was actually impressed with this product 
at how quickly it dries considering how thick it is. But you know, that's, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you're, if you're concerned, just do smaller sections at a time. Well, I hope everyone is, you know, happy and safe and quarantining. And to me, other than doing a little bit of DIY, which I've been doing a lot at my house, I think crafting is the next best thing you can do, right? <laughs> and, eating. and eating. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of baking too, you guys. Okay, so I think I kind of have gone far enough. Um, you guys let me know if you want me to go a little bit further. Oh, I just got some paint on there, but that's okay. So anyhow, that's that. I would just continue over here, continue over here. Oh, one more thing. Um, you can, when you get to this part of the roof, this is another really nice thing about the texture, is you can put a little bit of texture on your palette and then saturate it. Well, I'll, I'll do it real quick, just so you can see. So I decided that for the front part here, I needed a little bit of gold paint. And let, if you have some at home and you wanna go ahead and paint that, that's fine. But if you don't, this texture is super versatile. I'm just gonna take some water and mix it. And then you can use it as a paint. So like I would go in here and paint this part. And see, that actually covers pretty good. So what else could we do with the texture? This project here I love because it's ridiculously fast. I mean, this probably takes about five minutes and I'm not actually gonna demo it, but I do wanna go through the motions. Oh, that's hurts. <laughs> Thank you. So for this one, you would just get your palette knife, get it right into your texture, and you would just swipe up and you can see how the top is jagged. It's not, you know, perfectly straight all the way across. That's intentional. You get like this really cute sort of water or mermaid look. So you, you would just swipe the texture all the way across, which literally takes about three minutes, and then immediately get some fun embellishments. This is um, some oversized glitter, but you can get, you know, tiny beads or metallic paper and just sprinkle it on and then it just sort of lands and sticks wherever you sprinkle it. Okay, moving on to the next project. Let me move this so you could see a little bit better. So on this one, if, if you look at the tiles here on the perimeter, I did go a little bit larger and it's also a lot sparser. So again, I was talking about if maybe you didn't want to spend too much time on a project, if you wanted something a little bit quicker, this would be the way to go. Here, I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. This one, this one here, the little house, you can see how close together the little tiles are. And here they're very spread out. So this one actually took me very little time once I had the, the B powder down. Uh, this is a plastic charger from Michaels, and I did want to point out how you want to prep this before using the texture and creating this project. All right, so this is what it started out like. Just a gold charger, and then you're going to take a little bit of sandpaper. Oh, 
and you're going to scuff it up. It doesn't take much, but definitely enough to give you that, that texture. That might be confusing. I'm saying texture and then mm -hmm. <laughs> enough texture on your surface to use texture the product. All right. And you'll just wipe wipe the dust off. Okay, now, as you can see, this is much larger than the, the rooftop, right? So in this one, I would probably split it up um, into thirds, whether you want to go horizontal or sort of like a, like a pie, whatever you're more comfortable with. But let's go ahead and um, let's do gold on this one. Is there one? Anymore. All right, here we go. So this is going to be the same exact technique of just wiping it on. And I'm just going to do a little bit on the perimeter here so you could see. We'll do like a quarter of it. And um, I just wanted to show you how much faster it goes when you, when your little mosaics are a little bit bigger. It does look a little bit like icing and it kind of feels a little bit like icing too. <laughs> yes, don't eat it. Okay, so I like to cut a couple strips at a time. And then again, I'm making these pretty big. About that size. Hey, Plot, is, yes. texture, is our texture product waterproof? It's water resistant. If it's something that you want to uh, put outside, then you can put a um, DuraClear over it. Okay, so remember the technique that you just want to bend the corners in a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we'll get a little bit of gold over here. Press it down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you how much faster that goes. And when you're doing a mosaic, guys, um, imperfection is definitely perfection. Like you are not trying to align these in a perfect row, perfectly spaced apart. It makes it look a little bit more real and it gives it more character, I believe. Thank you. So there you get, you have a really good idea and you saw how fast that went because the pieces are substantially larger. Okay, now we are gonna have a pattern for the bee coming up, but I just wanted to show you, um, I got a little bit of glitter on it, but remember I was talking about how 
at first when you brush out the enchanted and enchanted shimmer it could have a little bit of a milky look um, it looks like the dots still need a little bit more time to dry but there you could see the enchanted shimmer and the enchanted once it's dry it just <clears throat> gives off the super beautiful metallic sheen and i do get this question a lot as well can you use these products over other colors the answer is yes but it's most dramatic over that very special um, enchanted ultra black base coat the darker the color the more dramatic your your shimmers are going to be on a light background like on white or a light blue or anything like that it's still really pretty it's just not as dramatic i personally prefer it over over the dark colors okay oh okay well, oh, you know what, if you can bring the, like if, if we could do, oh, see, that's what we need to do. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to try to get some nice light on this, because I feel like we're not doing it just us. We'll, we'll look over there. <laughs> we're like playing a little dancing. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, it's just, it's just really, really pretty guys in the light, really, really pretty. Okay, now for the B, I think we're gonna just do a little B um, for fun. <laughs> okay, here's the trick for the, for the B, we're, we're gonna do the body. I'm putting two pieces together. And if you prefer a pattern, like I said, we'll definitely have a pattern up for you guys. And I'm just gonna cut the shape. Okay. Then, I'm going to cut horizontal because we're, we're going for this look. Is that, oh, that's actually pretty close. Actually, maybe if I move this, we'll be able to see better. Okay, here we go. So once you do that, by cutting both colors together, the black and the gold, then it's really easy to just sort of align them to make your bee. And then the head, we're gonna do in glitter. And I'm just sort of eyeballing it, hoping that it's the right size. But it'll be pretty close. It'll be fine. Again, imperfection is perfection when it comes to mosaic, guys. Okay, so there's the head. Let's see if it's a good size. Yeah, that looks like a good size. And then we'll cut the eyes. Okay, I hope everyone could see that. And remember how I was talking about 
when you go to get your beautiful galaxy glitter, you definitely want to make sure that the clear ice comet is added to your collection. Why? Because it goes over any color. So I wanted to make the bee's wings like this really pretty buttermilk color. So I just painted it um, with Americana acrylics, let it dry, and then put uh, two coats of the galaxy glitter again and the clear ice comet. And you're going to cut out the wings. Doubling it up so that you can cut a couple at the same time. And I'm just doing a random shape. I'm not necessarily mimicking what we already have there. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, you could use a pattern or you could just freehand it if you want, whatever you're more comfortable doing. All right, so should we put Mr. B down? Might as well. I'll do the antenna in a second here, but let's just do it real quick. Okay, so now we're going to the middle part here. And don't worry about covering every single part all at once. I'm just doing enough to get Mr. B down. That's all. Because you, you can come back and fill in the gaps. No problema. So yeah, if anybody out there makes cakes, you're probably gonna be really good with this product because it really does feel like, like icing. And there's different colors, they're different metallic colors. Y yeah. Yeah, Michael's carries quite a few, you guys. Um, they're, they're just gorgeous and fun. And versatile, of course. Okay, hopefully that's enough to get Mr. Dion. So start with the head. Again, I'm sort of curling the ends up a little bit. Right there, press them down. And then his body is gonna alternate from black to gold. To black. Okay, so we have the body down. Let's get the little eyes in there. Oh, thank you. Okay, the wings, oh, let's make them a little smaller. You know, us crafters, we're always improvising as we go, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. So, the reason I wanted to do this from beginning to end is so you can see how fast it is. And I just lost one of the wings. I'll just cut them down. Of course I did. And of course, guys, you want to pick your favorite color combos. And I guess he needs antenna. Is it antennae or antenna? <laughs> antenna. Antenna, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
one and two. So another thing I wanted to mention is I only showed you guys two surfaces, but there's so much that you could actually use the texture on. You can use it on a canvas. Um, Michaels has a lot of cool stuff in their wood department, like their little um, jewelry boxes and different shapes. Um, so, you know, it's not limited to what I'm showing you here. There's so much that you can do with it. So, of course, this is not complete, but there you go. There's Mr. B. All right, you guys. So, um, I definitely want to hang out and answer some questions. I hope everyone likes this product, wants to try it. It's definitely one of my favorites just because there's so much that you can do with it. All right, everyone, I'm going to hang out for a little bit more, see if any questions come in. Again, thank you for being here. Um, I always have a lot of fun doing this because I feel like I'm not crafting alone. I feel like all of you guys are here with me. And um, I hope everyone's safe, happy at home, and hopefully crafting. <laughs> Well, if there's no questions, thanks for being here. Oh, there's a question coming in. Do you need to use a sealant or a top coat with this? Only a great question just rolled in, and it is, do you need to use a sealant or a top coat? The answer is absolutely not, unless you want to display this outside. Like this would look really cute on, on a fence or something in your backyard. Then I would suggest our DuraClear, which comes in everything from a um, ultra matte all the way up to a high gloss. But if you're just gonna have this inside your home, either hanging on the wall or on a little stand like this, you absolutely positively do not need a sealant. It's very, very durable once it cures. This is the um, DuraClear I was talking about, which is my favorite um, top coat. And one other question that came in from Yes, on. of course. Um, when you were making the paint pour on cardstock, did you already have the white down first or did you do it on straight cardstock? I did it on just straight cardstock. Okay. Um, straight if up. I wanted to do a specific technique where you want to float the paint and you want your white down first, then I would have. But for this, no. I, I just really, another thing I want to stress to you guys is it really does make a tremendous difference doing a variety of the mosaics compared to just doing a single flat color. It really adds a lot of interest and makes it really pretty, so. All right, you guys. Again, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Ooh, one more question. <laughs> yes. Now this one happens to be the satin, but what I love about this stuff, you guys, it is our most DuraClear varnish sealer top coat. And no matter what type of project you're working on, you might want an ultra matte finish. You might want a matte, a satin, a gloss, or a high gloss. Well, we have you covered. Yeah, we, we have you covered. I, I, I love that stuff. <laughs> I'll start to say goodbye again, another question. Look, we'll be here till midnight. Does that sound like fun to you guys? Sounds like fun to me. Um, but seriously, it's, it's, I really enjoy doing these and I'm really happy to have you guys on board watching and hopefully crafting and um, I hope you're inspired. Uh, thanks for being here and hope to see you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>